فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحوم كالطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير Go back to the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because we want to answer the question that people are asking why was hadith recorded more than a century after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the bulk of the books were recorded later on to be honest it's a good question but there is a proper answer for it proper there was no internet at the time there were there were no computers at the time to be honest there were no books at the time did you ever think of that they did not use to read and write. Go back to the verse. Allah says, It is Allah who sent in the midst of the unlettered a messenger from amongst them, which means most of the people were unlettered. They could not read or write, but they had a memory that was so powerful. They knew the lineage of their camels seven generations back. We don't even know our own lineage seven generations back. If I were to tell anyone in this hall, I'm so tempted to do it. <laughs> Does anyone from amongst you, uh, is anyone from amongst you able to recite your entire lineage now off by heart going back to seven forefathers? Please put up your hand. I do not see a single hand. Please stand up in case I'm missing your hand. So they had a memory that was probably one of the best and they relied on the memory. And this is why when the Quran came down, they immediately recited it. The little children knew the surah of Tabbat Yada Abi Lahabin Wa Tabba, yet they were not Muslimin, the little kids at the time. And it was something from Allah, but they were gifted not only to memorize and remember things, they knew long passages as soon as a passage was revealed to this date or to this day those who do not contaminate themselves with the new mobile phones and the new technology memorize many more phone numbers than those who have it includes myself and yourselves wallahi without a joke i think maybe 15 years ago 15 years ago I must have known a thousand phone numbers. They used to call me the telephone operator in my own house because anyone's number, wallahi without a joke, anyone's number you wanted to know, they would call me say, what's this uncle's number? I would tell you 471-7866, subhanallah. And they would say, oh, this, this one is the operator. Here's my operator. <laughs> wallahi, that was one of the names they had given me when I was young in my own home. I'm talking of my siblings. They must be laughing watching me right now. Allah Allah. <laughs> but the reality is we knew the numbers so many today. I don't think I know more than 10 numbers. To be honest with you, the number I'm using right now, I've no clue what it is. <laughs> no clue. So you know that when there is a will or where there is a will, there is a way. You know that when you have to do something, you have to do it. This is why sometimes I say, brother, what's your number? And he says, are you writing it down? And sometimes I say, no, I'm just memorizing it. If the person is extremely important, believe me, you're going to memorize that number. You will know it. I know I spoke to some of the youth and they say, yeah, I know my girlfriend's number one. <laughs> I hope you heard what I said. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because to them, that's VIP. Forget about the double V that we have today. No, oh, I never ever get the chance, you know, to know this again, I've just got this number. Allahu Akbar. Let's get a little bit serious. Going back to what we were saying, my brothers and sisters, at the time they loved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much that the way he breathed, they tried to breathe in the same way. Can I give you one example? Sahaba radiallahu anhum were such that some of them used to stop going from Mecca to Medina at the same position that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped to take a little rest and relieve himself. And they used to take a little rest and relieve themselves. And when they were asked, why are you stopping exactly here? They say, because we witnessed the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopping here. That was love. 
Now people say, oh, that's fanatical. Well, to be honest with you, when people cut their hair like the football players, then it's not fanatical. <laughs> when people dress like the others who are singing and dancing across the globe, then it's not fanatical. And when people want to follow a messenger, then it becomes fanatical. Allahu Akbar, what is this? These are double standards. No one is imposing it on anyone, but it's your own choice. This is the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The reason why I know exactly where he stopped between Mecca and Medina Munawwara is because the people loved him so much that they continued stopping in a similar place. Allahu Akbar. It's not compulsory to stop there, but when you love someone and you want to stop there, nobody can tell you it's wrong.